What's up, Theorites? Zell here. I just want to let you know about a new way to support the show. Some people don't like Patreon. They've had a bad experience. We hear your cries. We hear your pleas. We got a new way. It's called Supercast, and it's available on our website. Let's give a quick demo. Boom. Alientheorist.com. Support. Boom. Classified feed. Just scroll down. There it is. Five bucks a month. Sign up. This is... This is the exact same classified feed as Patreon. You get all our bonus stuff early, ad-free, everything we've ever done. You throw your credit card information in there. You choose how long you want to support for. You can cancel any time. It'll take you to a page that looks like this. Choose your device. Choose your app. It's not going to work on my screen because this is a demo, but it automatically adds the classified feed right to your phone. Super easy. All right, no more excuses. We give you two different ways. You get the exact same stuff. To get a, you get the shout out at the end of the episode. What more can we do? All right, and now here's a quick sneak peek of this week's episode. Peace. Holy so the, if we're talking about the very first, you know, to get really into it, the very first reports of the Chupacabra come from uh, around March of 1995, where he had residents from small towns named Orokovis and Morovis, uh, which were discovering... That residents discovered a number of their farm animals had apparently been or reportedly been drained of blood uh, through small puncture wounds and in, in some of the, the corpses. Now, the name Chupacabra uh, is a, some like a lot of people that there's still kind of dispute about where the name Chupacabra kind of popped up to. Uh, there's a number of people uh, out you near know, uh, like uh, outlets that would attribute the the name chupacabra coming from puerto rican uh comedian silverio perez uh who claimed that he coined the title uh shortly after the first attacks had actually become public but then there's other like cryptozoologists and other kind of uh news reporters that say that they coined the term so it's very much like but it's in there but well, if you there know, was some confusion because i believe they called a, a farmer in the area chinga cabra and they're like but <laughs> It was uh, it wasn't his mo. So you know the police let him off. Chinga cabra. Yeah. Go. For it. Go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, if you don't know, if you don't there understand, you uh, uh, if you're not fluent in Spanish, um, you don't know. But I mean, most people know it's it's, it's chupa. It chupa is to suck and chupa cabra, chups. cabra is goat. So you have like the the goat sucker because it it was associated mostly with the you know dead. Goats had become seemed to become the primary prey of this creature. Right. So I was reading something that said that the oldest, like the, they actually found that it was used in an episode of Bonanza, way back, and that was the first mention of it. But I, yeah, there is a mention of that, but it's also that that specific mention of the chupacabra doesn't refer to the creature. It refers to no, it doesn't. Else. No, but that's right. where they use it. It was like a bug. Right, right, yeah. So now chupacabra is let's so it translates to goat sucker, but now it's just been like taken as a cryptid, and that could be it could be taking any type of livestock or birds or anything. Yeah, it it does not only yeah the the victims of the chupacabra are not only just goats. Like it is very much like mostly uh, mostly livestock. So you but you have a, a reports of attacks on goats, chickens, uh, cows. Uh, even domesticated pets like cats, uh, uh, household pets and things like that. So it, it doesn't just suck goats. It what? chupas everything. The and chup in the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> chupa to chupa, buddy. Uh, it, and this area, it was so bad that like they would have like guards, like go out with like armed through the night because of the amount of livestock that were getting seemingly drained in this area. So it was like, th this isn't just like a one-off, like, hey, this is weird. Like, locals were concerned enough about this ongoing issue that they began to, you know, basically have, like, neighborhood watch going on, livestock watch, roaming around with, you know, guns out, ready to blast this thing. Yeah, the the entire episode of cattle mutilations went on for six months until somebody finally caught a glimpse of what they were 
what they assumed had been causing all this. So this is where Madeline Tolentino comes in. Uh, and she was a, uh, she lived in a city east of the island's capital, San Juan. And the others, uh, it, she kind of gave it its name of like what it was. So Tolentino described the chupacabra that she saw having dark eyes that went up to the, as far as the temples. So you're usually the picture that is kind of sketched out from her thing is like, if you imagine the, the archetypal gray alien, Those big like if, you, if you picture eyes. that, the kind of large bulbous head, and then the eyes that kind of reach up and almost wrap around the head, like that's kind of what she saw. And then oh. this creature, uh, when she saw it through a window uh, of what she was looking at, uh, she said it was about four feet high. It seemed to walk like a human on on two legs. It had these thin, lo- like uh, uh, gangly arms and legs. It had three fingers on its uh, fingers and toes uh, on the end of each limb. Uh, it had no ears or nose to speak of. And then instead, it just had two small air holes where the nose is meant to be. And then uh, she couldn't see any ears to speak of. And then. Uh, she also noted that there appeared to be something along the back, and this is where you get the description of the spikes that appeared to to her. She said she describes them as more like uh, feathers, but some type of protrusions, uh, long spindly protrusions sticking out of the back of this creature. You know, like it. My brain always jumps to like this. Sounds like what intelligent life could have developed from if dinosaurs didn't go extinct. Like this is like. These reptilian little things on two feet creeping around. Like, that's where my brain goes right away. Is that these? Oh, we already had that conversation. We already talked about it. And they look like the Mario Brothers movie. Yes. <laughs> they look like regular people. Right. And so- it's too, because it kind of touches on like when we talked to Michael Masters and basically we evolved to the point where we don't normally reproduce like we do now. Right. And the one thing this lady notes is that it had no genitalia. Oh yes. shit! She right, did so. report that you know she noted that in her description and in interviews uh, that you know she got a glimpse at like where normally for at least for you know Earth creatures uh, where the genitalia would be there was nothing it was just smooth maybe it's just like an innie mm. could be right so I, I mean you look at dolphins like you don't yeah. see anything no. hanging out yeah. so here's yeah. Ki- so here's kind of a sketch of <laughs> yeah see. So yeah, it looks exactly like Braden. That's uh, that's Braden yeah, right there. That's <laughs> that is the some, exact build. Thick, thick thighs, thick waist. Yeah, skinny like forearms. Like a pear. Like a pear. Quite pear shaped, and then it has the yeah. it has the big elongated like almond eyes. This looks like more like a kind of like a a hefty short gray. That's what it looks like with a couple mm-hmm. a couple extra. It, it back looks like spines. some sort of short gray variant, to be honest. Yeah, with yeah. raptor legs and fucking claws and shit. Yeah, man, heat resistant gray. Like if we yeah. if we're talking about the grays are maybe artificially produced and they're like they're you know, they're designed and created, maybe there are certain grays they you know, they change models for different specific this is the jungle what gray. they're doing. This is the tropical gray. Yeah, this is the blood extraction. <laughs> It's like when you go to buy G.I. Joe's and they just paint them different colors and you're just like. <laughs> Dude, they did that to us for years. I know. And you kept great. buying them. You kept no, buying I them. bought them all. It's got them <laughs> over my shoulder. Got them right there over your shoulder. Fuck yeah. Um, so, yeah, that that whole, like the, the early days of the Chupacabra were pretty nuts. So you had a bunch of reports coming in of people sighting this creature or at least the 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 glowing eyes of some type of creature all across like Puerto Rico. Um, it even got to a point where the like the one of the Puerto Rican government officials, uh, the mayor of San Juan, Jose Quimo Soto, felt like they the government needed to step in. And uh, Jose Soto is described as being a religious man. And there was a reverend at the time kind of preaching that the, the, the chupacabra was a sign of the end times. So um, th- there are some reports that that kind of put Jose Soto in the back of a pickup truck with a giant cross uh, oh. going around with a bunch of uh, chupacabra posses and hunting for the creature out in the, the, the dark of the night. Dude, so. he, they, they like Jurassic Park style, some of the documentaries that I was watching. It was him in the back of like an old like Tacoma, probably Zell's Tacoma, uh, with a trailer on the back with a caged goat, 
and they would just like be driving around and he's just chilling in the back with a giant cross. <laughs> right? Like just <laughs> I, I don't know what was he gonna do with the cr- club it. Yeah. Maybe, I, but it's like, he it's like dude, he's got the power of Jesus. Yeah. It's fine. The power of Christ compels you. Boom. <laughs> it it's weird though, because I was like, w- while they're towing a trailer with the goat in it, I'm like, what what thing is gonna come up to like a posse and be like like try to get at this goat right like, i'm like this it doesn't seem like a good plan but this mayor was fucking dope like i mean he, his whole platform was like ran on this like he's gonna yeah. catch this he was piece. up for he was up for re-election the next year so he felt like um he may have felt like this was a good time Listen. to capitalize or he was <laughs> out there is... trying to protect his uh constituents from the demon the demonic beast known as the this Chupacabra. is what you do <laughs> this is what you do church people this is fucking cool don't go knocking on doors handing out fucking pamphlets <laughs> don't go all westboro baptist and can hate do hate crimes and hold signs go hunting for fucking evil cryptids yeah. yeah, this is cool. Mm-hmm. I Agreed. will join that church. That's fucking awesome. That's our church right there. And Hell speaking yeah. of politicians, I don't want any, any of these signs at the end of the road. I want to see you in the back standing in the back of a <laughs> Toyota Tacoma with a caged goat trying to attract Bigfoot holding a, a weapon that's not suited to hunt the creature you're looking for. Don't yeah, give Rick Dyer any ideas now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, want, I want the straight Jurassic Park style goat in the cage. Wait for him. So, following this all, uh, this whole thing, what is this? All the events of 1995. You have in March in 1996, you have Spanish language talk show host Cristina Saralegui, uh, Saralegui, and on her popular show Cristina, which is essentially like, if I remember, like I remember that show. I never really watched it a lot, wow. but I've seen. I, because it's on Spanish speaking TV, I've seen a couple pieces of it. And it's like, it's basically kind of, she was kind of like the Oprah for most of like Central and South America. Like, I remember her. <laughs> like, I remember she her. She was the Christina, all right? Right. She was yeah. the Christina. She was um, the Christina. And so she actually aired a story. <laughs> she just stand out there handing out chupacabras to everybody. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you get a chupacabra. <laughs> you get a chupacabra. You get We've a chupacabra. You've got your seats. Uh, uh, she actually aired a story about the, the events that took place in Puerto Rico, about the, the goat sucker, the chupacabra. And this was followed almost immediately by an increase of reports throughout Mexico and Spanish speaking areas in the United States of sightings of the chupacabra. That, so either dude, people that, just, you know, that makes so much sense, because every time my mom would watch Oprah. And there would be like an event and there'd be some shit going on. There'd be like, well, they're trying to, you know, there's kidnappers in the streets and I'd have to check in with my mom every 20 minutes when I was outside. Like that makes, that's hilarious. So it's not like, I mean, if you do a quick Google search for Chupacabra, you're going to get to a a number of regional like Chupacabra, like variations and things like this. But you'll have a Chupacabra almost like all up and down from Canada all the way down to like Argentina you'll have a chupacabra of those areas. Like there is a chupacabra of Canada. There is a chupacabra yeah. of, you know, different His parts of the Braden. United States. Yeah. Okay. Right. Got, got him right here. Yeah. Sure. Craig. <laughs> Craig Cabra. Um, though uh, the, the the vast majority of them do come from uh, reports come from Spanish speaking or Portuguese speaking areas. And so, I mean, it, have what it is. Uh, that that kind of seems like what the net. If that's where the original chupacabra cited, maybe that's its more you know natural habitat. Um, you know, we'll get into theories about why other ones kind of pop up in other places a little bit later. But so um, in 1996, this became such uh, a phenomenon that a team of scientific investigators. And everyone, everyone, everyone's got chupacabra merch, t-shirts, <laughs> hit songs, <laughs> right cartoons yeah chupacabra hit, he made it big time it, it did much, it, it, in scooby-doo yeah right? yeah it, 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 it you uh, hey, if you're a cryptid a new cryptid you make it on scooby-doo the scooby and the gangs after you you, you made, made you done made yeah you made it for sure to keep up to date with all things alien theorists theorizing follow us across social media on twitter instagram patreon and facebook For updates on new videos and content on YouTube, don't forget to click like and subscribe and hit that notifications button to keep those eyes on the skies with alien theorists theorizing.